My work is multidisciplinary. Uh, I do a lot of acrylic on canvas paintings. Um, product development has been um, a fun thing that I've gotten to try my hand at. Clothing design's another one. Coloring books. Basically anything that you can kind of put my work onto. I'm Patrick Hunter, I'm an artist and graphic designer, and I live here in Toronto. I've been painting, I would say since like grade 10. I've always kind of been creative, and then ever since then I kind of felt like I had something to say or contribute. But professionally I've been painting for the last, like, full time um, for five years. It's one of those things that I think a lot of artists go through where there's really no plan B, there's no net underneath, and it's like walking uh, like a high wire. You just kind of have to put one foot in front of the other and hope that everything's gonna work out. And, you know, luckily it has. Um, there's been a lot of opportunities that have come my way. I'm the artist in residence to the Prince of Wales. Well, his charity in Canada. We've just put out a Indigenous coloring book where you can learn three different Indigenous languages. The city of Toronto has a bunch of my artwork and one of the rooms in, in City Hall. Even just people that have um, gotten my artwork through gifts, I think, is pretty cool. Like, uh, Global Affairs Canada, they, they bought a bunch of my scarves to give out to a lot of their dignitaries that were coming in from all over the world. It's moments like that that kind of keep you wanting to figure out what's going to be the next thing that's coming your way. I've been working with a couple organizations on land acknowledgements in Toronto. Amazing institutions in Toronto that are you know, really recognizing and taking the number of calls to action the um, Truth and Reconciliation Commission had set out. Land acknowledgement is one of them, and that just is just recognizing that there was an indigenous population here. Honoring that memory and, you know, informing the people that come into their offices that there are, still are indigenous people here. I think that's, that's pretty cool and that's really important for Torontonians to go into, into spaces that recognize that and just being able to see it I think is important for Native people as well. You know, we're definitely a population that doesn't get a lot of airtime. This whole entire country was filled with Native people prior to, uh, you know, 1492. In, in, in a lot of these places like Toronto, Winnipeg, you know, Vancouver, Anywhere in this country is where Native people you used to be. It still are for the most part, but it's not reflected in the architecture. It's not reflected in the culture of the city. There's ways to kind of indoctrinate, uh, teach, educate um, cities and, and you know people that live there about uh, Indigenous values, culture. I think it's important to educate people on because it was such a repressed culture. Like, it was outlawed, it was like punishable by jail time. I think there's a lot of work to do in that sector, but um, I think there's, there's more people that are coming up and kind of really showing that there's a story to tell here, and it's, it's a rich story that's, that's worth taking a look at. I was asked by Harborfront Centre in Toronto to work with them uh, during their junior weekend, which is uh, the long weekend in May, they have youth from all over Toronto come in and they learn from different artists. So I was asked by the Harborfront Centre to come in and facilitate a, a coloring workshop. And uh, my coloring book with the Prince's Trust was a great segue to do that. So we printed out my pages from the book really big uh, and I put the translations from English into Ojibwe uh, for the narratives that go along with each of the pages and um, yeah, so kids are learning Ojibwe, they're coloring pages and then yeah, we're working on a big art piece together. It is really rewarding to work with kids. Uh, their imaginations um, are pretty boundless and it's really cool to see you know what kind of colors they're using to color my work it's been about well it's been two days um, and about 600 of my pages have gone out there into Toronto and uh, it's kind of crazy that, that I'm making little artists out of like all these kids at junior 
I grew up in uh, an outskirts of Red Lake called Madsen. It has about 80 people and like 40 dogs. There's no stores. There still is an internet there. I had moved to Toronto um, in 2011. Toronto just seemed like the next logical step. The imagery that I'm producing, uh, it's in the, the field of woodland art. Imagine that you have um, like x-ray vision or x-ray goggles and you're seeing into a creature and you know you might be looking at their bone structure or you know there might be like a, a spiritual side to them as well like you're, you're looking at their soul or their life force sort of thing. But I, I definitely love that sort of um, that aesthetic of seeing what there is on the surface but then you, there's a lot more beneath it as well. It's seeing how people react to the stuff that I create. Um, like people like buy shirts like this because they love this shirt or like they buy this mug because they it's their favorite mug and I think it's kind of like it's chasing that feeling of like I just made someone so happy that they, like they can't contain it they want to buy another one